What's going on guys? Tyler here from don'tpanicdothis.com, the site all about helping you to beat your panic attacks and anxiety. For many people, aviophobia or the fear of flying is a source of great anxiety anytime we have to travel. Uh, I want to talk about in this video 13 different ways to help you prevent or stop panic attacks while flying. Now I'm super passionate about this topic because not only did I used to be a big sufferer of panic attacks in my past, but also I worked for a few years as a flight attendant and I encountered all kinds of customers with all kinds of fears and anxiety and having panic attacks on the plane and I figured out some strategies to help these customers and I want to share those tips with you today. Uh, if you guys are more of a visual learner, feel free to check out the full article that I'm basing this video video on. I will link to it below. It's on don'tpanicdothis.com and it's all about how to stop panic attacks on a plane. Uh, without further ado, guys, let's get right into this. I want to tell you the exact strategies that I recommended to the customers while I was flying for an airline and I think that they can really be of a great use to you guys. So let's get right into it. Okay, so for our first tip, we're going to start way before you even get on the plane. And what I recommend here is just to know exactly what to expect while on board. Just be familiar with the procedures of the airport and the procedures of actually flying. Um, a, lot of, a lot of times first time flyers are uncomfortable with a lot of things just because they don't really understand them. Uh, so let's cover a few of these basic things that I think you should understand. First off is turbulence. That's anytime you feel the plane feel like it's bouncing or dipping. This is due just that changes in atmospheric pressure and the plane doesn't feel it. It might feel like something bad is happening. You might be scared, but it's really important that you're prepared for to experience at least a little bit of this on any flight. Sometimes it can be really bad. Sometimes it can be really mild, but just remember, the pilots are professionals and there's a whole team of professionals making sure, you know, air traffic control, the pilots all communicating together to make sure that the route they're flying is safe. So even if there is a little bit of inclement weather, uh, the pilots will typically tell you beforehand to expect some turbulence. You should usually see it coming, but even if sometimes you don't, um, you know, sometimes it's just like hitting a pothole in the air. The plane will make a little bounce. It can really scare people. I used to sit in the jump seat and, you know, just be scanning the crowd and seeing, uh, and it was is, you know, a little humorous sometimes just seeing how nervous people would get their expressions anytime you'd hit a little bump that I would know is no big deal, but first time flyers just get so worked up about it. So it's really important to understand turbulence is normal. Uh, the plane doesn't feel it. It's just like being on the ocean on a ship and the ship rocking. The plane does the same thing. So you should expect it to happen at least a little bit. It's not indicative that the plane is going down or that there's anything bad actually happening. Uh, if, if you feel like you need to talk to somebody, feel free to reach out to the flight attendant and they'll probably tell you, oh, this is nothing. This is totally normal. It's, you know, it, it gets way more intense than this and is still fine. Uh, so that's all for turbulence. Uh, onboard emergencies. A lot of times we're worried that something might occur up in the air. It's important that you know that flight attendants are trained 100% for medical emergencies. They know exactly what to do. I've even had to give CPR on board while working before. Um, it, you know, these, these, these are professionals. They're trained in any of the basic medical stuff that is required to help out on board. Uh, and if not, you know, they always patch into uh, MedLink and they give a call and make sure that they're being guided with medical assistance. Everything you could possibly need is on board. A diversion, if absolutely necessary, is is never far away. Just let the pilots know and they, they land the plane and get you help if necessary. But just remember that there are professionals on board. And also, we would always call and say, hey, is there a doctor on board? You know, we're dealing with XYZ issue and most of the times there is at least one medical professional if not more on board. A lot of flights have three, four, five doctors on board that you wouldn't know from sitting there as a passenger, but they are there. Um, so just keep that in mind. Don't be afraid of too many onboard personal emergencies. Help is never far away, even up in the air pressurized doors. So the doors, a lot of times you guys will see uh, in movies and stuff, you might be afraid of someone opening the door and the door flying open. The, that's all movie magic. That's not real. Uh, the doors are heavily pressurized. Nobody can open those doors once you're up above 10,000 feet. It's it's not going to happen. Don't worry about it. Uh, don't even bother thinking about that. Uh, and then entering the cockpit, you might be afraid of somebody trying to breach the cockpit, any kind of terrorist activity or something like that. Just bear in mind that we've come a long way uh, since the past 20 years. The security measures are ridiculous nowadays. Um, nobody's getting in there. Those are, you know, bulletproof 
you know, bulletproof doors. No one's getting through there. There's strict procedures that the flight attendants and pilots are trained on to make sure that nobody can access the cockpit. So you're in good hands. Uh, aside from that, I'd also just recommend in general to decrease your stress about this whole thing, the whole process, and make sure you get to the airport early enough that you don't have to rush through security because sometimes you get there, there's a long line, especially around the holidays, especially at bigger, crowded, more crowded airports on, on you know, Sometimes there's a big line that you're not anticipating. So make sure you go there early enough so that you're not adding fuel to the fire and being stressed out from the very beginning. My second tip to help you decrease anxiety before you even get on the plane is to choose your seat in advance. That way you can kind of help out with whatever airline, airplane claustrophobia you might get. So everyone sort of has a preference. Some people are aisle people, some people are window people, and people are typically pretty passionate about where they sit. Nobody wants to sit in the middle. You know, you're just gonna be bunched up like this, feeling claustrophobic the whole time. But you know, you might also feel that way in the window or you might feel that way in the aisle. Everybody has a preference and if you don't already know, you're gonna have to experiment a little bit and see where you're comfortable. But if you do know and you know exactly, you know, you wanna sit in the window, you wanna sit in the aisle, this is something that you need to plan for in advance. If A lot of times if you're booking through a third party website for like the cheapest, cheapest cost you could possibly get, they're already basing uh, those prices, those tickets, based on a cheap seat that they're buying. So if you do that, don't be surprised if you get stuck with a not so great seat and then complain to the airline, hey, why am I here? That's not fair. It might be because you went through a third party uh, site and got a third party rate for a very cheap seat. Uh, but typically if you buy a ticket through the airline or even if you don't, sometimes you can talk to the gate agent. That's the person, you know, before either either the person at the front desk uh, before you go through security or at the gate after your past security uh, before getting on the plane. You can talk to them about possibly changing your seat or setting it up. Uh, or, or picking your seat even easier if you could do it. When you book online, a lot of times when you check in, sometimes there is an added fee, but most airlines will allow you to choose your seat um, either for free, you know, first come, first serve, or with a, uh, with a little bit of extra cost associated with it. Um, obviously, if you can afford a first class or business uh, ticket, that's even better. Um, coach will be cheaper, but if you really want space, if claustrophobia is an issue for you, you will always have more space in a first class or business ticket. But even if you don't, you can always talk a little bit to the gate agent about uh, about your seating. What I don't recommend doing is being one of the people that gets on the plane and then realizes that you don't like your seat and then trying to complain to the flight attendants uh, about switching seats with somebody else. This is always a, a nuisance and a hassle for everybody. It's not fair to the flight attendants who are busy with their safety related duties and it's not fair to the other customers who have already done their due diligence of picking their seat online or paying extra money for a specific seat. Uh, don't be that person. And guys, if you need a certain seat to help you feel more comfortable, just do it beforehand. You can do it oftentimes online or at the gate and that's not gonna bother anybody. But make sure you do that if you have a strong preference, if you're gonna feel claustrophobic in a certain type of seat, make sure you do that beforehand. Tip number three is again something that you're gonna wanna plan for before you even get on the plane and that is to pack everything you're gonna need on board in a small bag. So what I mean by this is it's gonna depend, you know, the airline that you're flying is gonna have depending on who you're flying on, is gonna have different baggage policies. Some will allow you know, a roller board, that's like a small uh, sort of duffel bag type looking thing, uh, plus a personal item, which can be like a backpack or something that can go on your lap or under the seat in front of you. Other airlines aren't gonna allow any of that, so it all depends on your airline's policy, but for the most part, I recommend having a small personal item, something like a backpack or a purse, where you can put anything that you're gonna need through that flight to be comfortable. Don't only rely on your rollerboard bag to put in these things because a lot of times overhead space on the aircrafts fill up and you are not entitled. Once that space fills up, they're gonna be checking bags and you can huff and puff and complain, but at the end of the day, if you wanna get on that flight, uh, you're gonna have to check that bag. So I really recommend you know, bringing a personal item, something like a backpack where you can make sure you put everything you need just in case your rollerboard has to be checked. You can still bring that personal item on board and you'll be good to go. What I recommend putting in there is gonna vary depending on who you are, but a few of my recommendations, uh, I can show you guys a photo of some of the stuff that I typically bring. Um, I would pack something like a sweatshirt or a jacket because the cabin temperature in the aircraft often varies considerably. Sometimes it's really hot, sometimes it's really cold. I recommend bringing headphones for music or any of the movies that the airline might be playing. I recommend bringing a book or a video game or something to keep you occupied. 
Um, I recommend bringing a water bottle or snacks for long flights if you're going to get hungry or thirsty. I recommend bringing a pillow and or blanket. Uh, they are often sometimes offered on board, especially for longer flights, but not always. So if that's something you're going to need to sleep comfortably, then I would definitely bring something like that. Uh, maybe a laptop if you plan to get some work done, a phone charger for long flights with outlets, or in case you arrive and your phone is dead and you need to call a cab, make sure you have a phone charger on you. Uh, any required medications, because if you're going to need something on board, even something to calm down or for any other type of medication, if applicable, you're going to want to have that with you. Um, and then anything else that you need to comfortably get through the flight, I recommend putting it in that carry-on item. I will link below to the backpack that I currently use. Uh, I travel quite a bit and I love this backpack, so I will link to it below so you can buy it if you'd like. Um, uh, but otherwise, any backpack will do. Uh, I just highly recommend make sure you have everything you need in that one personal item. Don't just put it in the rollerboard because if that gets checked, you're going to start feeling anxious and not good for however many hours your flight is. Tip number four is to bring a sedative for fear of flying if it's absolutely necessary for you. This doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use it, but any kind of anti-anxiety medication that you might have or any kind of anti-anxiety supplement can be really helpful to get you through a long flight. So if you already have an anti-anxiety medication prescribed, to you, that's something that you'll probably want to have on board. I usually recommend, you know, if it's a benzodiazepine or something like that that you're prescribed, I usually recommend holding out on using it. See if you can get through it. Like, don't, try not to rely on it. Try to just keep it in the back pocket and say, hey, if I need it, I have it. Let's see how long I can go. Typically, I think that this is a good way to step outside of our comfort zone and decrease our fear even faster. But uh, it's it's sometimes just knowing that it's there is enough to, to help you relax and not have a panic attack. Otherwise, if you don't have a prescription or anything like that, uh, I typically would recommend just having some type of anti-anxiety supplement with you, whether it be, you know, a passion flower tea, a, uh, a Phenibut is really good because it lasts a few hours and it just helps decrease feelings of stress and symptoms of anxiety and stuff like that. Uh, kava, maybe anything like that. You could even honestly, I mean, I don't think it's the best coping mechanism, but even if you needed, you can always buy a drink or two on board to help you relax a little bit. Um, any of those anxiety supplements I mentioned, I would recommend if you don't already know your favorite anxiety supplement, feel free to check out our anxiety supplement section on don'tpanicdothis.com or you can uh, just check out, I think I have a video on here somewhere about different types of anxiety supplements that you can feel free to search for that as well. But anything like that, I recommend just keeping it on hand, not necessarily using it, but sometimes just knowing that it's there is enough to help calm you down through the flight. All right, step number five for how to stop a panic attack on a plane. Now we're actually moving into some of the things that you can do on the plane. Um, now, what I recommend here is if you're having a panic attack, and this is kind of general advice for any panic attack, but just remember two things and keep these thoughts in mind. It's, it's a little broad, but it's critical to remember. One, panic attacks are not dangerous, and two, panic attacks are temporary. You are not gonna die from this. If you've had panic attacks before, you probably know that this is just a panic attack, even if you are thinking a little irrationally. You can tell you've felt these symptoms before. If you've never had a panic attack before, well, this is a great place to be. Make sure you read all of the stuff we have on our website uh, on don'tpanicdothis.com. Make sure you really understand what a panic attack is and you're well-equipped to deal with it. Um, also remember, I mean, I mean, just remember you're not gonna die from this. It's just a panic attack, it's not dangerous. And also remember, it's going to pass. A lot of times we feel like this is gonna last forever, but that's just not the case. This feeling is gonna pass just like any other panic attack you've had before. Usually it's over in a couple of minutes, usually under 10 minutes. Uh, some people will have them for even longer. I personally haven't really had panic attacks for longer than 10 minutes, even on my worst days. But if you do, that's okay. It's still going to pass. Think about panic attacks you've had in the past and think about, hey, did they last you forever? While we're thinking irrationally and having a panic attack, it may feel like we're gonna be in this state forever, but that's not the case. It's not dangerous and it is temporary. You're not gonna die, it is gonna pass. Step number six is also kind of general to panic attacks, but also just super important to remember and to practice while on the plane. It's important that we regain control of our breathing. So during a panic attack, we're actually hyperventilating and breathing in too much oxygen, which is a bad thing, believe it or not. So. Bringing, breathing in too much oxygen and hyperventilating is going to exacerbate and worsen the feelings of our panic attack and just make it last even longer and feel not very good. So that's why one of the most important things we can do is regain control of our breathing. My current favorite breathing technique as of making this video is the 478 technique, which involves breathing in for four seconds through your nose, holding your breath for seven seconds, and exhaling for eight seconds through your mouth. You know, you're always trying to do belly breathing so that you feel your stomach rising and falling with each breath. Um, and just in general, just 
you know, you do this a couple of times and it will help to activate the parasympathetic nervous system and calm you down and sort of reverse that panic attack as opposed to letting, you know, your breath go unchecked and, and just worsening everything. It's important to also remember there are some other methods that you can do. There's usually barf bags in the back of every uh, seat back pocket and you could always technically breathe into those. Uh, that's not good for people who have something like asthma or another medical issue um, because they actually do need oxygen. But well, I mean, we all need oxygen, but they, they might really need more oxygen if they're having an asthma attack and you don't want to get the two mixed up and mess up there. But uh, just keep in mind, uh, they are there for you to breathe into if it's going to help you to stop your hyperventilation. Some people do find it useful to breathe into a paper bag. Even more useful than that, I used to just like, kind of weird, but I would just put my shirt over and just like, just breathe like that. Um, I know that looks a little weird, but it looks less weird. Uh, I, I would do it just as a comfort thing, like not even thinking, like chewing on my shirt and just be breathing into my shirt and like the warmth and the recycled air kind of just made me feel better and calm down and stop my hyperventilation. Um, and it's a little bit less obvious than breathing in and out of a paper bag on an airplane, uh, which is going to obviously draw some probably unwanted attention. But it's important to remember while we're up there that they have oxygen bottles. So if you actually genuinely had a problem with your breathing, which if it's just a panic attack, that's not the case. But if you actually were having a medical emergency, just rest easy knowing that there are oxygen bottles on board and that every flight attendant on board knows how to use them. They are trained in using oxygen bottles and administering oxygen when somebody is not getting enough of it. Uh, so just rest easy knowing that that is an option if it got to that point, if you actually were having a medical emergency. Tip number seven for stopping a panic attack on an airplane is to talk to the flight attendants. So you might feel like you're being annoying, uh, but don't. Honestly, it's a pretty easy job for the most part. Uh, most of my days would consist of just, you know, doing a, doing a service and then sitting and playing on my phone or reading a book for six hours at a time. Uh, a lot of times I was just trying to stay awake, honestly. So especially if it's a longer route, the flight attendants are probably a little bit bored. As long as you're a good conversationalist and you're not really intruding on their space while they're trying to eat or something like that, they're not going to mind talking to you. Uh, feel free to reach out to the flight attendants. You could even tell them how anxious you are. Everybody I've worked with, uh, for the most part, has been really great, and they're always they were always willing to help out and talk to customers, especially if they're feeling anxious and they know they're empathetic people for the most part. They'll talk to you, they'll help calm you down, they'll help uh, you know allevi alleviate any of the issues you're having, um, any of the doubts you might be having or worries you might be having about flying. They'll they'll talk to you about it. They'll talk to you about the turbulence and they'll really be, do their best to help you out. Uh, sometimes they'll even I would often even be like, hey, uh, you know. Would you like a free wine? Like I, I would comp them a drink, a free beer, a free wine, something to help them relax and calm down a little bit uh, if, if that was something that might do the trick for them. Uh, interestingly enough, I actually even had one time uh, a young nurse, a young female nurse who was having a panic attack and came up to me and was saying she actually, this is just an interesting fact about panic attacks in general because this is a medical professional who came up to me telling me I'm having a hard time breathing I'm a nurse and I know that something is wrong. So she was absolutely convinced that something was wrong and that she was dying, but it looked to me, I'm not a medical professional, but it looked a lot to me like a panic attack and I was pretty confident that she was having a panic attack just from having had them myself and seeing what she was kind of showing and how, how she was acting. Um, so I just sat down with her, I pulled her to the side, I went somewhere private with her, uh, sat down and just talked her through it, just talked to her, kind of distracted her a little bit, um, talking about how she's feeling and, and, and then I said, oh, you know, have you ever had any type of anxiety before? You know, I got her an oxygen bottle because she said she was having a hard time breathing uh, to kind of help her out with that. Um, but I just basically, what really helped her in the end was just sitting with her, talking with her, and then I reached the subject, hey, have you ever had a panic attack before? And she goes, oh yeah, yeah, I do have anxiety and I, I have had panic attacks before. And I said, oh, well, you know, do you think that this could be a panic attack? And then she kind of came around to the realization that, yeah, she thought it probably was a panic attack. And then I kind of just laughed with her and I talked to her about how my own sister is actually a very anxious nurse as well. Um, and we just had that common ground and talked for a little while. And eventually she was distracted and the panic attack subsided and she was able to go back to her seat. But it's just an example of, you know, even when things get really scary and really bad and they can happen to anybody, even a 
trained medical professional, uh, sometimes it's helpful just to talk to somebody, especially somebody who knows about anxiety or you let them know about your anxiety. They're gonna be empathetic and they're gonna try to help you out for the most part. So don't hesitate to reach out to the flight attendants if you just need somebody to talk to about however you're feeling, uh, they're gonna do their best to help. Tip number eight for stopping a panic attack on a flight is if you're old enough to enjoy a glass of wine or another adult beverage while on board. Uh, so I kind of touched on this in the last section just a little bit, but Remember, they sell alcohol on the planes, and that's a pretty solid option, at least for the short term, uh, for just decreasing feelings of anxiety or nervousness, obviously. Um, obviously, if for whatever reason, medical reasons or just personal reasons, you can't drink or don't feel comfortable drinking, then I definitely wouldn't do so. Also, don't mix it with anything else if you're already taking medication. For whatever reason, up in the sky, uh, maybe due to the altitude, the alcohol just hits you a lot harder. People get drunk a lot faster than they're used to, and the last thing you want is to get kicked off or you know kicked off the flight before the flight takes off or banned from the flight altogether. Um, however, you know, with, within reason, it's, it can be a good idea to have a drink or two just to help mellow you out and get you through that flight. Uh, important to note that most airlines are not going to serve you alcohol while you're on the ground. You're going to have to wait to get up in the air. Just Usually that's because of liquor license laws um, and probably safety reasons as well. But also, you know, if you just let the flight attendant know, hey, I'm a nervous flyer, you know, blah, 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 talk to them for a little bit they'll probably offer you a free drink. In fact, it's one of the easiest problems that we can we could solve. Like, hey, you know, you're here. I, you're not feeling well, here's here's a drink. Like, it's, it's that simple. Uh, and it doesn't come out of their pocket. So for the most part, they're gonna be willing to help you out. Just don't have the audacity to be like, hey, can I have a free drink? I'm nervous. Because then they're gonna be like, get out of here. You know, that's obviously presumptuous. Uh, but, you know, with some tact, go over and talk and, and explain your situation and they'll probably offer on their own. But even if they don't, you could always buy it. Uh, get it, buy a drink or two and, and if that helps you mellow out, it's always an option. Tip number nine for how to stop a panic attack on a plane is to watch a movie, listen to some music, or play a video game. So basically, during a panic attack, one of the best things we can do is distract ourselves from our panic attack, pull ourselves out of our head, because we know how things get when we're having a panic attack. We go down this rabbit hole, this negative thought spiral that's really, really hard to get out of. So it's important that we do something else with our mind, find some type of distraction that's that's a positive outlet for our thoughts. A lot of times this can be a movie, this can be music, this can be a video game, uh, especially on an airplane where your options are a little limited. Those are some of the best options we have. Um, everybody can put music on their phone. Everybody can put music on their laptop or their iPad, whatever it is that you have. You can probably put music on it. Um, a lot of times airlines offer Wi-Fi, sometimes even for free. A lot of times um, Airlines will have uh, like movies or TV shows in the screen, especially more innovative, newer airlines with newer planes will have that stuff. So that's something else that you might want to research beforehand, getting an airline that has free Wi-Fi or, or TVs in the screens, because that can really help time fly by. You bring your own headset, plug it in, and it gives you, you're just watching a movie in a chair for the most part for that'll knock out two hours right there. Uh, something else I highly recommend is something I used to bring to work with me all the time. Um, uh, just a video game, any any type of thing you can play, a handheld video game, uh, maybe like a Nintendo Switch, that's a really good option nowadays that can, you know, just something to do while you're on the flight that's going to keep you distracted in a positive way and just let time fly by. Uh, just bring something. It can even be a book, but just something that will distract you. Tip number 10 is one of my favorites, and it's to get some work done while on the plane. So not Every, this won't be applicable to, ev to everybody, but most people will have some kind of thing that they can do. Uh, if you're a student, maybe it's homework. If you're, you have a career, maybe it's some type of work-related task you can get done. If you run a business, I'm sure there's something that you can do on a flight to be productive. Obviously, you know, you keep yourself busy enough during the flight and you won't even have time to think about your anxiety. You won't even have time to think about a panic attack. Uh, the time's just gonna fly by because you're working uh, and just being productive with that time. So you might as well use your time productively, get some work done if you have any, but it'll just speed up the process a whole lot for you. Tip number 11 is to take a long nap. So obviously, if you're really, really anxious about flying, it's kind of sound like this is impossible for you, but sometimes even if you have a panic attack on a plane, there's that little fatigue period that we have, you know, post panic attack recovery where we're feeling just kind of run down, tired, uh, because we just use so much energy panicking or feeling anxious. And uh, once you get com comfortable, uh, once you acclimate even, sometimes like the first 15 minutes you'll be anxious, but afterwards it's like putting a fish uh, in a fish tank in the, in the plastic baggie, you, gotta, you can't dump them right in, you gotta put them in the water 
in the baggie, wait for the temperature to acclimate, and then you let them in the new tank. Um, it's sort of like that. Like there's an anxious period at first, and then you acclimate, and then you're good. Uh, it's the same type of thing. Once you're good, uh, taking a nap will be feel a little bit more reasonable. And honestly, I knock out on flights. Like it's like teleporting for me. It's my favorite thing about flying. I'll show up a little bit tired. I'll bring a, a, a pillow or crumple up a, a jacket and put it against the window, and I will knock out for like at least half if honestly like 80 percent of most of my flights i sleep through if i try to read a book or i try to watch a movie i get tired and i just fall asleep uh not everybody's gonna have that luxury uh if, if, if you're not that comfortable on flights but just remember uh you know eventually you're gonna get a little tired of feeling anxious you're gonna get a little tired of of whatever you're gonna acclimate to the situation and you're gonna be more receptive to sleeping maybe even show up tired uh, but if you take a long nap it's gonna feel like teleporting it's gonna make your flight go so much faster so if possible try it tip number 12 for stopping a panic attack while flying is to look out the window or don't depending on uh, what kind of person what kind of anxiety you have so this sounds like a weird suggestion obviously if you're afraid of flying you know some people are probably listening to this like well I'm afraid of flying I'm afraid of heights why would I look outside not everybody is. Some people are just afraid of the claustrophobia of flying. They're afraid of having a panic attack and embarrassing themselves while flying. And these are the people that this is gonna be a good suggestion for. Look out the window. Um, you know, sometimes being so high above the earth has this really humbling f effect on us. We realize how small we are and how insignificant our fears really seem. Uh, I don't mean to get so existential in this, but uh, it, it just, for me, it puts things in perspective in a way that makes my anxiety feel silly and not worth focusing on. I go, oh wow, like look how many little lives are down there. Look how much, like I'm so small. You know, how, how am I gonna really, what am I really thinking about right now? Me having a panic attack, it's just so insignificant. It's so silly. And then when I think like that, it kind of just helps calm me down and realize like, hey, this isn't worth thinking about. Um, Gaze out the window, admire the mountains, admire the ocean. Just, it's a beautiful view. How incredible is it that you have the privilege to be so far up above the ground, something our ancestors could never do, flying through the air like a bird. You know, I I don't mean to get all weird and metaphorical on this one, but I'm just saying it, it can help a lot of people, I think. But if it doesn't, if you are one of the people that gets more anxious looking out the window, then I recommend closing the window or not looking out the window at all, obviously. Uh, so like I said, look out the window, or don't, but uh, whichever is gonna help you. And my 13th and th 13th and final uh, tip for how to stop a panic attack while, while flying is to remember the reason you're traveling in the first place. So this is that light at the end of the tunnel. Obviously, if you're flying, there's a reason you're doing so. You didn't just say, hey, I'm gonna sit on a plane and feel anxious today. You're doing something that either excites you or it's important that you do it. Maybe you're visiting a loved one, maybe you're seeing a country you always hope to see. Maybe you're just you know, going back and seeing your family after years of not seeing them. Maybe it's something upsetting, you're attending a funeral, but it's important to you is, is the thing to remember. There is a reason you're traveling, something that's important to you, and it's important to keep that in mind. Uh, it, it's important to have that motivation and know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel, there's a reason you're doing this in the first place. You know, are you going to Japan for the first time? Are you going to see somebody you haven't seen in years? Are you, uh, you know, is this your honeymoon? Whatever it is, uh, there's, there's got to be a reason to be somewhat excited or motivated to do this. Uh, just just hold on to that, that feeling and remember your why. Uh, that's always important. Anything we do that makes us anxious, there's usually a reason we're doing it in the first place, some kind of goal at the end of the tunnel. And that's so important to remember. Um, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today on how to stop panic attacks on a plane. But if you guys are wondering other methods, on don'tpanicdothis.com, I have so many other articles and so many other videos on ways to stop panic attacks in general or how to stop panic attacks in different situations or even how to stop different types of anxiety. So make sure you check that stuff out. Uh, make sure you check out the ebook we have on the site. Make sure you sign up for our newsletter and uh, just really get as much as you can uh, of this information because it's gonna be really, really helpful for you and you can beat anxiety and panic attacks long-term. You just gotta put in the time. Uh, so do check out our website. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this with somebody. If you got a flight, if somebody you know has a flight coming up that they're nervous about, be sure to share this with them. Uh, it's always appreciated. It helps my channel grow and it means a lot to me. Thank you guys so much. Feel free to comment below letting me know anything about uh, some of your tricks for stopping panic attacks or anxiety on your flights. And that's all I got for you today. I hope to see you guys next time.